news, and through me, tell the story of that man skilled in all ways of contending. The Wanderer, harried for years on end after he plundered the stronghold on the proud height of Troy. He saw the town lands and learned the minds of many distant men, and weathered many bitter nights and days in his deep heart at sea, while he fought only to save his life, to bring his shipmates home. But not by will nor valor could he save them, for their own recklessness destroyed them all. Children and fools, they killed and feasted on the cattle of Lord Helios, the sun. And he who moves all day through heaven took from their eyes the dawn of their return. Of these adventures, Muse, daughter of Zeus, tell us in our time. Lift the great song again. Sailing from Troy Ten years after the Trojan War, Odysseus departs from the goddess Calypso's island. He arrives in Phaeacia, ruled by Alcinous. Alcinous offers a ship to Odysseus and asks him to tell of his adventures. I am Laertes' son, Odysseus. Men hold me formidable for guile in peace and war. This fame has gone abroad to the sky's rim. My home is on the peaked sea mark of Ithaca, under Mount Neon's wind-blown robe of leaves, in sight of other islands, Dulichium, Sami, wooded Zacynthus, Ithaca being most lofty in that coastal sea, and northwest, while the rest lie east and south. A rocky isle, but good for a boy's training. I shall not see on earth a place more dear, though I have been detained long by Calypso, loveliest among goddesses, who held me in her smooth caves to be her heart's delight, as Circe of Iea, the enchantress, desired me, and detained me in her hall. But in my heart I never gave consent. Where shall a man find sweetness to surpass his own home and his parents? In far lands he shall not, though he find a house of gold. What of my sailing then from Troy? What of those years of rough adventure weathered under Zeus? The wind that carried west from Ilium brought me to Ismarus, on the far shore, a strong point on the coast of Sicones. I stormed that place and killed the men who fought. Plunder we took and we enslaved the women to make division equal shares to all. But on the spot I told them, back, and quickly, out to sea again. My men were mutinous, fools, on stores of wine. Sheep after sheep they butchered by the surf and shambling cattle, feasting, while fugitives went inland, running to call to arms the main force of Sicones. This was an army trained to fight on horseback or where the ground required on foot. They came with dawn over that terrain like the leaves and blades of spring. So doom appeared to us, dark word of Zeus for us, our evil days. My men stood up and made a fight of it, backed on the ships with lances kept in play from bright morning through the blaze of noon holding our beach, although so far outnumbered. But when the sun passed toward unyoking time, then the Achaeans one by one gave way. Six benches were left empty in every ship that evening when we pulled away from death. And this new grief we bore with us to see. Our precious lives we had, but not our friends. No ship made sail next day until some shipmate had raised a cry three times for each poor ghost unfleshed by the Sicones on that field. The Lotus Eaters Now Zeus, the lord of cloud, roused in the north a storm against the ships, and driving veils of squall moved down like night on land and sea. The bows went plunging at the gust. Sails cracked and lashed out strips in the big wind. We saw death in that fury, dropped the yards, unshipped the oars, and pulled for the nearest lee. Then two long days and nights we lay offshore, worn out and sick at heart, 
tasting our grief until a third dawn came with ringlets shining. Then we put up our masts, hauled sail, and rested, letting the steersman and the breeze take over. I might have made it safely home that time, but as I came round Malia, the current took me out to sea. And from the north, a fresh gale drove me on past Scythera. Nine days I drifted on the teeming sea before dangerous high winds. Upon the tenth, we came to the coastline of the lotus eaters, who live upon that flower. We landed there to take on water. All ships' companies mustered alongside for the midday meal. Then I sent out two picked men and a runner to learn what race of men that land sustained. They fell in soon enough with lotus eaters, who showed no will to do us harm, only offering the sweet lotus to our friends. But those who ate this honeyed plant, the lotus, never cared to report nor to return. They longed to stay forever, browsing on that native bloom, forgetful of their homeland. I drove them all three wailing to the ships, tied them down under their rowing benches, and called the rest. All hands aboard, come, clear the beach, and no one taste the lotus or you lose your hope of home. Filing into their places by the rowlocks, my oarsmen dipped their long oars in the surf, and we moved out again on our seafaring.